Okay, uh, so we're going to look at simplifying some trigonometric expressions. Uh, basically, we're starting with sine of x times secant of x, and we're wanting to uh, reduce that down to one of these four options below. Uh, a lot of a lot of places, you know, they'll call this a trigonometric identity. So this is going to be some relationship that's true for all values of x, right? Uh, the trick is take everything and we're going to rewrite it in terms of sine and cosine. So leave that first one alone. We're just going to leave that as sine of x. And then the secant of x in terms of sine or cosine, it's going to be 1 over cosine. Okay. And then we'll you know multiply straight across. So we get sine over cosine, which is, of course, equal to tangent. All right. So sine over cosine, you know, that's a that's a trig identity as well. And, and you know, there's several of these that you just got to become familiar with. <laughs> uh, but usually it's, you know, taking some random expression like this and then rewriting it as tangent of x. That's that's kind of the gist for how to work with identities. You don't have to memorize them all is what I'm saying. <laughs> OK, uh, cotangent. I will rewrite that in terms of sine and cosine. That will be cosine over sine. And then 1 over secant. Uh, that is still equal to 1 over cosine. When you multiply across, uh, what's going to happen before we do that, actually, uh, is the cosines will just cancel out with each other. And so now when we multiply across, we get 1 over sine, which is cosecant. There we go. Awesome. So I should mention the only reason that we're, you know, we're, we're able to just drop off these uh, little parentheses of x, it's because it's the same angle in both of them. You know, if this was cotangent of 2x and secant of x, would not be allowed to do something like that. All right, so just make sure before you start ignoring the stuff in parentheses, make sure you, uh, Notice that they're the same. Okay. All right, this one, uh, we've got sine squared times cosine over sine. And again, the stuff that's diagonal, you can cancel. And so this sine is going to cancel with one of those up there. And so what we're left with, if we multiply across, is just sine times cosine. And that's our answer.